Hello, this is Tom Beal, and welcome again to another edition of Mobe's Ask the Expert Titanium Series. It is with unique pleasure and honor I bring today's special guest to you because this guest not only has had a tremendous impact on my personal life, but probably most all of the top experts in the internet marketing and marketing space who are still out there alive and thriving today. Come to think of it, 13 years as of this month uh, was the day that my path crossed with this individual. And that's where he hosted one of the events that raised the bar for this entire industry. When I put an event on a couple of years later at $5,000 per ticket, the whole goal was to emulate what this person did with the value and the ambiance that was created at that event. And this is, the expert today is the one and only Stephen Pierce. Stephen, thanks for being with us today. Hey, Tom, it's good to be here, man, and I appreciate that. Man, think about it, 13 years, man, that's been a long time. Time does fly, huh? It does, and and that was my first introduction to you and to the marketing world, and I was just so impressed. I mean, first of all, you have people like Jay Abraham, Rick Shefflin, I mean, uh, geez, Alex Mondozian. I can't remember some other experts you had there, but it was it was impressive from start to finish and opened my eyes up to the possibilities because the numbers you were sharing all those years ago were staggering and mind-boggling. And, and, and I'll just start with this. Uh, you know, your story kind of reminds me of, Will Smith's role in that movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. You know, so, so those listening and haven't met you yet, you weren't raised on a silver spoon uh, upbringing. Is that correct? Yeah, no, yeah, that's absolutely correct. I came up in a middle class family with um, a mom and pops. They were married. My dad was in the military, so it was one of those military households. But I was rebellious with all capital letters. Mm-hmm. Not surprising, not surprising. And that rebelliousness led to your marketing world, which – like when I, like I saw you, you had such determination, such dedication, such commitment to excellence, and that just spread to impact mine and many other marketers' lives. So the purpose of our call today is to help the people listening here, the Moab Titanium members, recognize what it takes to grow their business, what it takes to scale their business and get the results that are life-changing. And that's a, that's a broad question, but, you know, with you helping so many people, where would someone start? If you were sitting down with me saying, Stephen, here's where I am, here's where I'm looking to go. What are some basics that we have to first set as the foundation to get clear on what the path will be to get us there? That's a good, that's a good question. It's interesting because when it comes to being successful in business or, or athletics or whatever, we tend to look at a lot of the different tangibles and some of the things that are obvious, like, hey, you know, what's going to be the product or what's going to be the physical location or what's going to be the avatar of the people that I'm going to be marketing to, what's my price point, what's my funnel, what's the ascension going to look like, and all these different things, which they have their part. But from from my experience, those aren't necessarily the determining fact, factors in the big picture on if somebody's going to win or lose. For me, it comes down to the intangible. So the first thing I would start with is mind and mood management because cause one of the things that we do as business people and entrepreneurs we look at our resource management. We look at our time management and, you know, our, our business management and money management. But for me, um, energy management and, and how we go about using our mind and how we go about using our mood is the most critical factor because every single second that ticks by, every single moment that goes by, the quality of that moment, the quality of that time, the quality of its productivity is directly related to the quality of the deposit of your focus, of your energy, and of your emotions. So it doesn't matter how well planned your, your day is and how many opportunities you have for funnels and joint ventures and speaking and business growth. If your mood and your mind is not properly managed, then those things are going to end up sabotaging what it is you have the opportunity to do. So one of the things that I'm really big on is making sure that as entrepreneurs that we are emotionally fit and that we are mentally fit because that's really what it's going to come down to. Do you have the emotional and mental endurance to do what is required for you to find out what's going to work, to do those different tests, to press through, to deal with the competition, to deal with the unknowns, to deal with the different setbacks and all the different things that you're not expecting to happen but are going to be required for you to deal with for you to experience the level of success that you desire. Wow. Man, I wish I wish that could really just resonate with those listening because it took me many, many years to figure that out. So thank you for sharing that. that. It reminds me of this quote from Nikola Tesla who said something along the lines, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, 
study energy, frequency, and vibration. And I love how you just, mm. just talked about, like, it, it, when you take control of that mood and energy and you manage that properly, that sets the proper foundation for all other acts that you're going to take to grow your business. Now, with all the distractions that are happening today, you know, 13 years ago, there was a few things out there that, that kind of pulled for our attention, but nothing like today with the Facebook, with the WhatsApp, with the Instagram, right. with all the social media uh, combined into to your first key there of controlling your mood and controlling your energy. What are some tips that you might be able to, to plant some seeds for the listeners on how they can manage those things that are trying to pull their time, pull their mood, pull their energy away from the things that can grow themselves personally and professionally. What are some social media tips you can pass along to the listeners? Well, before getting into the social media, actually, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to group that in with pretty much everything because, mm -hmm. you know, distractions come from many different ways. And because a lot of us are on our computers, yeah, there is this tendency to be distracted by social media uh, tremendously. But the, it, the, one of the most powerful things that we have, Tom, is the power of choice. There are a lot of different things that we can do, but how we decide to focus is going to be ultimately everything. So we literally, as entrepreneurs, have to create our own personal boot camp to get ourselves to be emotionally fit and to be focused. So one of the things I recommend, and this is actually what I do, Start If you're not doing intermittent fasting, do intermittent fasting. And it's not just for the health benefits, because there's a lot of health benefits. And intermittent fasting, for those that don't know, you can go and you can, you can look into it, but you're only eating within like an eight-hour window. So for 16 hours of the day, you're not eating. So for me, my window of time cuts off at around, um, around 1130. Mm -hmm. I stopped it a little bit earlier today because Tom and I are going to be chatting with you all today. But then I don't eat again until the next morning which is a small break of my fast with a, a BCAA with my pre-workout, but then my main break of the fast is my post-workout meal. Now, what does this do? Well, initially when you do it, you're going you're to be a little hungry. You're not going to be starving. But what this helps you to start doing is controlling your urges and controlling your emotions because a lot of hunger becomes mental hunger before it becomes physical hunger because here in the United States and in most developed countries, nobody is starving to death, you know. So we, we tend to have this, urge, oh, you know, I want to eat something or I want to snack on something. If you're within the window of when you're not supposed to be eating, then guess what? You then have to control that urge and control that emotion, and you are now – starting to exercise discipline and strengthen those disciplined muscles. Because to me, discipline is like a muscle. And another thing is taking cold showers because extremely cold showers can be extremely comfortable. And you may be in there screaming like a little girl like I do sometimes, ah, ah, because it's, it's cold, it's cold. But guess what? When you force yourself to stay there, you are, you are starting to condition yourself to deal with things that are uncomfortable and not give in to the emotion because a lot of us, the way we are conditioned, we tend most of the time to allow our commitment to bow down to our, our feelings as opposed to our feelings bowing down to our commitment. So really this comes down to the personal choices we are going to make. When you, when, when you get the pop up for your Facebook or you, you, you get someone trying to contact you on Skype or whatever thing you're using, uh, WhatsApp, whatever, you have a choice. Because that's an interruption. That's a disruption. If you already have something on your schedule that you're getting done, at that point in time, you make the decision to remain focused and stay the course. And the reason all this is important is because whichever thing we give in to the most is the thing that we ultimately strengthen. If we give in to the distractions, then we weaken our ability to focus on the singular task that's in front of us, and we start to strengthen our reaction to distractions. So one way or another, we're becoming strong. It's just what are we becoming strongest at? Are we becoming stronger at controlling our focus deliberately, or are we actually becoming stronger at allowing all these different social disruptions to, to draw us in out of the things that we feel are most important in the moment to be focusing on? So either way, you're becoming strong. Just make sure you're becoming strong at the thing that serves you and not the thing that sabotages you. Wow. Success leaves clues, ladies and gentlemen, and the funny part is I can relate to both of the things you mentioned there to help you emotionally in your decision-making process. I do fasting regularly. I do three-day apple fasting. The thing that gives me, Stephen, is you may, you may experience this uh, occasionally, maybe not because you're emotionally stronger, but I'll catch myself during a three-day apple fast where I eat nothing but apples and water, 
at the cupboard or, or looking at my watch saying, hey, is it lunchtime yet? And when that does, that triggers me to step back and object and say, wait a minute, I'm not even eating now. What am I trying to avoid? What am I procrastinating on? What am I not strengthening mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, the, the, the common out is always time to eat, where it gives you that different perspective. So I love how you shared that. And the other fun thing, I was smiling as you talked about the cold showers. That's another thing I do. And no matter how many times I've done it, I'm always overcoming my mind trying to talk me out of it each and every yep. day. Does that happen to you as All well? All the time. And that's oh, the funny thing. That's a, that's I hate thing. it every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to kill you. Your mind's going to protect you. But I'm like, look, I'm not going to die from this. And I've done it every day for so long. Why am I still trying to talk me out of it? But that builds up your emotional strength your decision-making strength, which is paramount and yep. key. I, I thank you for pointing those out. Now, you listening, uh, rewind, listen to it again, and jot those down. And don't just think about it and say, oh, that's a good idea. Implement. And let's chat about that. What's what's bridging the gap? And how can people bridge the gap from knowing? Like, because they just heard some hints that you do and I do. That's a hint that, that you know, success leads clues. But a lot of people will hear that, oh, that sounds nice, and never implement. What are some strategies that you have shared with some of your students and implemented yourself that have bridged that gap to help people actually do the things that they know they should and could do if they're serious about their goal of growing their business? That's a great question. And i found with all the different things that people can propose to help a person to overcome procrastination and to take action, i found for myself and different people that I work with that it really comes down to in the moment of decision to just think about it or do something about it, it all comes down to literally what you're focusing on in the moment. When someone is not in action, what they're focusing on is something that is suppressing the action. See, a lot of us can get aroused, but arousal, and and for those of you that are into marketing, you keep this in mind, arousal does not equal action. Excitement does not equal execution. See, you can speak and you can promote and people can become aroused. It's like a guy, he, see, he may see a woman and get aroused, but I don't mean he's jumping on her, right? But he, he's, he's pretty excited. So, But the thing is, we can get excited and we, we can get aroused, but what are we focusing on? Sometimes we look forward, but we're focusing backwards. And what does that mean? That means we're looking at an opportunity in front of us, but we're focusing on the things behind us that didn't necessarily work. So we're thinking the thing that we're about to do is going to probably end up like the previous thing. Right. And that's probably not going to be the case. So here's what I ultimately do. And you can do this on yourself. I do this when I'm, I'm speaking to groups on a stage and I'm selling something from a platform or I'm sitting down with someone one on one. And I do it with, with, with myself. It's simply called ABC. Right. The first thing is and, and you can look you can focus this on the action that you're looking to take. What do you absolutely want? That's the A. What do you absolutely want? To, to have happen or what, what, what do you want to be, do, have, become, contribute, et cetera? What is that? And then the B is what are all the benefits as a result of you, you doing that thing? And then the C is what are all the consequences? And then you go one additional level deep. You circle back to the benefits and you say who else is going to benefit? Because sometimes it takes us looking beyond ourselves see who else is going to benefit before we'll actually start to do something. And then on the consequences side, you say, hey, listen, who else is going to suffer? And you really want to be heavily associated. This is not just supposed to be ideas and words in your head, but you really want to understand what do you truly have to gain by going for it and what do you truly have to lose by not going for it. And the reason why I do them both is because, we, I mean, listen, we've been around long enough to know the old saying that, hey, people do anything to avoid pain and anything to gain pleasure and the old carrot and the stick. And if I'm talking to someone, I don't know if they're more moved by the carrot or moved by the stick. I don't know if they're heavily linked towards avoiding pain versus pursuing pleasure. But if you set both of them in front of, in front of a person or in front of yourself, I call it trapped between the pincers. Because on one side, you are stacking all you have to gain in the pleasures. And on the other side, you're stacking all the pain and all the consequences. Your mind is go- and brain and nervous system is going to respond to one side or the other. But if you really, really do that, and here's the thing, we have to make a decision. Tom can't do that for you. Matt can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. You have to make the decision to engage in your own life and sit down and do this. Turn off the television, turn off the music, turn off the social media, turn off all the things that massage you emotionally, 
keep you comfortable. Because if you're looking to be extraordinary, if you're looking to be great, we can't live our lives looking for someone that, or, 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 or people to come tuck us in and make us feel good about everything that's going on in our life. We need to accept the fact that, hey, there's going to be a lot of painful things, and we know that. And since, and, and since we're going to experience pain, whether we do something or we do nothing, we might as well pick the pain that we're going to experience. And one of the greatest pains is overcoming inertia, overcoming inertia. And there's multiple kinds of inertia, by the way. And this kind of goes along to the point of, uh, of, your, of your question, Tom. The, the thing is, is this what I call cognitive inertia. Cognitive inertia is when a person doesn't even see that something has to change. Right? There's an, there's an old uh, test that someone did. Um, it's called, like, and I call it pigeon thinking where they put a pigeon in a box and they put two different feeders in it. I think it's just called one a yellow feeder and one a black feeder. And they'll put food and let's just say the white feeder and the pigeon will actually peck around until it finds the feeder with the food in it. But then if you take all the food out of the white feeder and put it into the feeder right next to it, the pigeon's going to keep pecking in the empty feeder until it dies of starvation. It never even knew that something had to change. And it just kept on doing the same thing over and over and over again. So that's called cognitive inertia. Another one is called action inertia. And action inertia is you see something has to change, but you never develop the ability or the skill to change it. And that's where it's like, hey, you know what? I need this needs, I know this needs to change with me mentally or emotionally or physically or financially, but you didn't, you never developed the skills. So now your action is, is, is stumped, right? But you can overcome that. But believe it or not, Tom, that is not the largest category. The largest category isn't those that don't see that something has to change, and it isn't those that haven't developed the skill set specifically to change something. The largest group of people is voluntary inertia. They see something has to change. They have the ability to change it, but they decide not to do anything about it. And that is a person that has that lives rather they admit it or not they're living in some emotional space of hopelessness because hopelessness is something that makes us feel as if hey it doesn't matter what i say it doesn't matter what i do nothing is really going to change for me so why even try so we tend to we we tend to accept and we tend to uh, um basically lower our standards and lower our expectations of ourselves and look to justify the environment that we're in, the circumstances that we're in, and make it okay and find as many people as we can around us to co-sign on this underperforming life to give us permission to remain there. And anything that will tempt us or, or, or um, prompt us to do something about it we will tend to fight against. We will tend to we will tend to resist, and that starts to create conflict in our life. And that conflict is first an inner conflict because you know you're capable of more, you know that you want more, but yet there's this other part of you that feels as if you can't have more. And that is the conflict we have to decide to resolve ourselves. Man, I know I just said a lot. Wow, that was super impressive. I, I highly recommend you listen, which I, I will do this as well, is rewind this and listen to it again and again and again. Because no matter where we are when we hear it this first time, we're going to be in a different place the next time we hear it. Um, but that, that's absolutely brilliant. And this is from years of obvious, obviously taking your craft seriously, studying at a level that very few people dive uh, as deep as you do, uh, and experientially, you know, growing your own business to the tune of tens of millions of dollars, if not close to a hundred million plus, um, and helping others. I mean, from that event 13 years ago, I was adding up all the different hundred million dollar performers I know from that event. I, I think that event 13 years ago has created at least over a billion dollars in revenue. Uh, and, and with the, it's at least, I mean, it, it's so impactful. And you're witnessing this as a, as someone who's listening. Now, the cool part, Stephen, is here's the deal. The people listening to this, aren't the only people who got, who got access to it. There's a lot of people that got access to this that never opened the uh, audio. So they're at a step and or read the transcript. So how can you kind of let people know if they're on this path, as of where I was 13 years ago, you expanded my mind to, to recognize I was settling for less than what I was capable of and worthy of. And I stepped up and took some actions that my previous self wouldn't have. So the people listening are taking actions that other people who have the opportunity have invested aren't even listening to this. How can you let them know they're in one of the best times in the world ever? Right now, a week years ago, the stuff they have available to them wasn't available. You and I had to go get programmers, had to take ideas and create 
Now there's the tools that Matt and Mo provides for them. There's the training. There's the there's the implementation that the path has laid out for them how to get from where they are to where they want to be. How can you assure them that when, I guess in essence, the law of sowing and reaping, you know, when they take the proper steps, it's not going to be uh, the gold uh, laid out in front of you, but with perseverance and with determination, you can get from where you are to where you want to be. Yes, yeah, so here, here, here's one of the things that I want everyone to kind of reconcile in their mind, the idea of being able to successfully plan your success. Because I know we talk about all kinds of planning, you know, business planning and, and marketing plans. And you talk to anybody, you go into a room, you say, how many of you in here plan on becoming successful in your business? And everybody's hands are going to raise up. And I can ask everybody listening to this, how many of you plan on being successful in your business, in your marriage, in your relationships, or whatever it is you're doing? And you're going to be like, hey, yeah, that's what I plan on doing. And I'm here to tell you it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen based on a plan. Because here's the thing. Planning is for controlled environments. You can plan to bake a cake because you can control the ingredients. You can control the volume of the ingredients. You can control the oven um, temperature. You can control how long it stays in the oven. You can plan to paint a room because you can control the temperature in the room. You can control what paint you bring in there. You can control how much of it you put on the wall and how long you spend painting. The one thing that is very difficult to do, and the moment we get this, we start to approach business and life differently. One of the reasons why you can't really plan success is because what you plan collides with what somebody else is planning, and it creates something that no one planned, and it's the person with the strategy or the multiple strategic choices that wins. Case in point, two football teams hit the field. The defense has a defensive plan. The offense has an offensive plan. One plan isn't going to work the moment that ball is hiked, right? But that, guess what happens when – when, oh, think about this. When a, when a quarterback goes into the huddle, and, and for the women listening, if, if you're not much of a, of, of, of a sports person, forgive me, but, but metaphorically, this will help everyone to understand. The quarterback goes into the huddle, and he calls a play, which is also called a plan. But notice on his forearm, he has a whole bunch of other options to, 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 to look through. That's called the playbook, right? Now, when he goes to the line of scrimmage, he just called the play. Everybody's like, boom, and he goes to the line of scrimmage. Why does it? Does a quarterback in various uh, situations call an audible, which is a changing of the play? Is it because he's schizophrenic? Is it because he's double-minded? Is it because he can't make up his mind? No, he just saw, based on the plan he was about to have the team to execute, he was able to read the defense, and he saw one or two things. The defense he is reading is about to shut down what he just called, or the defense he is reading has opened up an opportunity he wasn't aware of when he was calling to play in the huddle, so he calls he calls an audible either to exploit an opportunity or to prevent damage from being done. But guess what? That's what strategy is all about. A lot of us we want things to work by the numbers. Hey, listen, success is in the coloring book. You can't just color within the lines and follow the numbers and use this crown and that crown and think you're going to be able to step back after a certain period of time and following all the steps and say, oh, look at my beautiful life and business and body of success. No, no, it's, it's pretty much total chaos. It's like war. The moment that we can accept the idea that I want to become successful, I know ultimately where I want to go, I have no idea how long it's going to take to get there, but I'm committed. I have no idea how many battles I'm going to have to fight, but I'm committed. I have no idea how many wars I will engage in, but I'm committed. I have no idea how many losses I'm going to have to take, because I'm, but I'm committed. And here's the thing. We never ask for it to be uh, uh, convenient. We never ask for it to be affordable. We only ask for it to be worth it. And the moment we can accept that no matter how many plans you have, don't get me wrong, it's a great idea to have a plan, but you have to just say, hey, this is my starting point. All hell is going to break loose the moment I execute this plan. Am I emotionally and am I mentally ready? That's why emotional and mental fitness is important. Now, to Tom's point, can you become successful? Absolutely. His, history that goes well beyond our generation and the generation before us shows us that success is not about um, possibilities. And, and, and Tom, here's the thing. And, entrepreneurs ask this question all the time. Hey, is it possible for me to have a successful business? Of course. Is it possible for me to do 10 million a year, 20 million a year? Yeah, but here's, I get the question, but it's not necessarily the right question because you're asking a question about possibilities that none of us control. 
asking questions about potential is something none of us can control. The right question for us to be asking is what are the probabilities of us being successful? Example, you want to lose, a, you want to lose a hundred pounds. Is it possible? Yes. Do you have the potential? Yes. Is the probability of you losing those hundred pounds high or low if you eat 10,000 calories a day right before you go to sleep and you move very, very little? The probabilities are zero. The probabilities of having a successful business is zero if you don't take the first steps and then follow through. The probability of closing the deal is zero if you don't make the calls. So we want to look at probabilities, and this is the question I ask, and I, I propose that all of you ask. Once you're clear on what you want to accomplish, ask yourself when you're faced with any choice, any option, is this going to increase or decrease my probabilities of hitting the goal if I do this? If I sit down and I watch all and I can and I and I binge watch whatever the television show is, and I'm not talking about a break you earned, I'm talking about escapism when you're trying to escape something that needs to get done. Because we all need brain breaks and vacations. But look, we don't take six days off and one day on. That's that's not how the process works. So when, when you're when you're when you're presented with the different distractions and the different options, it's, it's a really simple question: Is this going to increase or decrease my probabilities of success, however you define it, in the area that you want to be successful in? If it's going to decrease it, then guess what? The, 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 the choice is made. If you decide to do it anyway, remember this one thing: We never get in life what we desire; we get what our habits create. That's it. If you habitually give in to the distractions, if you habitually give in to the things that don't serve you but sabotage you, you habitually give in to the things that are decreasing your chances and probabilities of success, then you will perpetually get what it is you don't want, which is a subpar life, lack of success, overweight, unhealthy, whatever it is that you don't want, you're going to continue to get it because you continue to feed it by virtue of your habits. Man. Amen is all I can say. Amen. Uh, <laughs> in, the, in the Marine Corps, they taught us three words. And when you have a plan, basically they told us, expect from the get-go, the plan is not going to go to plan. There's going to be chaos. Right. There's going to be other teams with other plans. And your plans collide, and the plan goes all, to, all crazy. So they yep. say improvise, adapt, and overcome. So I, I know, I expect uh, chaos each and every day. I don't expect the day to have rainbows and, and and doves <laughs> every step. I expect challenge. And and what you just stated is is news to some people who are just on this path. Of maybe they had success in corporate America and they're like, hey, look, I want to be an entrepreneur now. Um, it's it's a struggle even for people that have had tremendous success. And, and Matt Lloyd, even you know, after doing hundreds of millions of dollars, he shares videos uh, now recently with the lessons he learns every day. And the bigger the bigger results he gets, the bigger challenges he faces, and the bigger lessons uh, and the more costly that those lessons are. So that's why he put together experts like Stephen coming in here to share this this experience, you know, real-world stuff that uh, I know is helpful because it's helpful to me. Like, like this whole – I've done a lot of things I never imagined I would do, but this call right here right now – has shifted some things in my mind to help me be a better person and take larger actions and, and be uh, more of what I'm capable and possible of. And that's our hope for you here. So, Stephen, I know she, you and I could talk. I could go on on for this all day. <laughs> this is what it's right. all about. But I, I appreciate yep. you taking time out of your schedule. Now, for those who just crossed paths with you, just like I did 13 years ago, and, like, I want more of this, where can people go to learn more about Stephen Pierce and what the products and services are that you has to offer? Well, that is uh, a great question. I do have a top-ranking podcast on iTunes, um, which is called The Success Sculpting Show, um, which Tom um, will be on. He better be on anyway. Um, and I, 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 I share a lot of different experiences from my life, and I interview different people and just different lessons because this, man, look, there's a price to get there. There's a price to stay there. And we just have to understand that. <laughs> you mentioned, like, you don't expect every day to be rainbows. I was thinking to myself, man, you know, if I see a rainbow, I'm in awe. Oh, my gosh, it's a rainbow. You know, because they're so, they're so rare to mm -hmm. see the rainbow. And the, and the thing is, it's not that you don't like what it is you're doing. You, look, you better, it's like a boxer. You better like fighting. You know, you better like, you better, you better like fighting if you want to be an entrepreneur. I know mm -hmm. the entrepreneurial life can be glamorized, mm -hmm. but 
Is it glamour? I don't, I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's glamorous. There are rewards, but those are rewards that have to be earned. And I want to say one other thing before I, I give out the URL. And, and I have dealt with a lot of entrepreneurs, and there's this old saying of, you know, fake it until you make it. And I kind of get that, like acting confident and ultimately you'll be confident. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs go to a certain extreme because what happens is they spend more of their resources investing and looking like an entrepreneur. In other words, the appearance of business and entrepreneurship and not the substance. Right, so they're now they're investing in the tra- what looks like the trapping, so they can look like they're successful, but they don't have the they don't have that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding, those that skill level. They they're not able to really do anything. They're not emotionally fit. They're not mentally tough or mentally strong to be able to deal with this warfare like path that we deal with in in, in business. And that's that's the, that's look. If you want to be successful in business, just accept that fact, man. That look, it's 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 it's. It's fun, but it's hard. You you have to you have to love solving problems. You just have to love battle. You know what I mean, I don't I don't really know how, what other way to put it. And there's micro battles and there's um uh, uh, macro battles. Some of the small battles can be big numbers where you'll be dealing with um you know battling with with Facebook ads, battling competition, battling. You're always battling for the attention of your marketplace, right? Mm-hmm. So with that said, uh, you can go over to Success Sculpting. Uh, dot com success sculpting dot com. I ain't got nothing to sell you today, but but, but if that is disappoints you all, don't worry about it. I, I'll figure out something. But no, it's, it's just a podcast. Very cool. The success Scal- sculpting show or success sculpting dot com. And as you can probably witness uh, now, after this time, this evening, you can understand my excitement in the beginning. And there's kind of another uh, interesting thing here. Like so, Stephen has his success sculpting show going on, but. You've been, you've been kind of uh, doing your own thing, and, and I, I'm honored that you uh, came out and uh, and shared this outside of your world. Like people in your world, they know you, they love you, they trust you, uh, but but you you do your you, you aren't out there uh, on stages like you used to be. But I I'm excited because I think there's a, a path uh, in the upcoming months where uh, we might we might see you back on some stages. So I'm pumped to, to see you live again, and I thank you for your time here today. Any last words of uh, advice or wisdom for the people listening here today, the most titanium members, you know, uh, who have been facing that struggle. And some might have faced some struggles to be like, you know what, I'm not sure if this is even for me. Like, you know, man, I gave it my all, but I just keep hitting wall after wall after wall. What type of advice could you give for someone that, that may be in that spot? Um, interesting. Well, w- real quick before I say that, if, if, if anybody wants like a quick uh, um, training video, you can um... – you can text money 2020 to 26786. That's money 2020 to 26786. I'm putting together something with someone. Um, but by the time you get this, you should be able to get a, a quick um, training video. Um, now, to answer your question, Tom, I, I, I would leave everyone with this. The three invisible ingredients to all success, focus, consistency, and patience. Focus on the right things, doing them at the right time, learning how to do them the right way. Do those things consistently because, remember, it's not what we do one time or sporadically or haphazardly or occasionally that's going to produce the best result. It's what we do consistently. When a person gets cancer from cigarettes, it's not one cigarette. It may have been one final one, but it's consistent. The folk, uh, uh, smoking. The person that may get liver damage from too much alcohol is not one drink. It's consistently drinking. It's all the different things that we do from consistency. And here's the thing. Though, I want everybody to keep this in mind. Every single one of us are consistent. We don't lack consistency. Consistency is not developmental. It's directional. You are either consistently doing something that helps you or hurts you, serves you or sabotages you, moves you forward or moves you backwards. Just focus your already ability and power of consistency onto the right things and then be patient. A lot of these things that we experience in life is all about patience. You don't have babies overnight. If you got your wife pregnant and she had the baby the next day, that's a problem. If the baby comes in four months, that's not a blessing. That's a problem. The same thing with gardens. So a lot of these things is all about the, 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 just sometimes just waiting. Many times as entrepreneurs, we can misinterpret the delay thinking we're doing something wrong when actually we're not really doing anything wrong. We just need to give what we're doing right enough time to work for us. 
Right, so focus, consistency, and patience, the invisible ingredients to all success. Man, well, uh, super, super excited that you were able to take some time out and share this wisdom with us today. And, man, uh, I am going to be listening to this over and over. Uh, this is currently my favorite interview with my favorite expert right now. So thank you again, Stephen Pierce. Um, the Success Sculpting uh, Show, or, or say the, the URL. And the, success and Sculpting.com, Success Sculpting.com. Success Sculpting.com. And uh, take advantage yep. of that. This is just the beginning. Stephen is a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge, and helping you get from where you are to where you want to be. Thank you again, Stephen Pierce. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you having me on.